My name is Michael Wardy. Uh, I'm a project manager at Aquatecture, focused on uh, all sizes of infrastructure, ranging from distributed wastewater treatment assets to larger scale capital projects. I was always interested in clean tech um, more broadly. That's what led me to the solar energy industry. Um, and I think when I uh, moved abroad, the goal was always to try and understand you know, what is the, the next generation of industry. So the last hundred years have really been driven by the extractives industry. And I think that has kind of a, a temporal aspect to it, right? There, there's, there's clearly going to be a finish line to when we can continue using oil and gas and coal to power our world. Um, and so in my imagination or in how I foresee the world moving, it was focused on clean tech. And so start off in the solar energy space, but then when I moved over to China, um, you know, everyone who moves abroad always kind of has this you know, come to water moment. Um, where you turn on your faucet or you turn on your shower and a black sludge comes out or you hear about people getting sick. Um, and so while I was over there, I was working on some pretty large solar projects in Western China here in the US. Um, and I kept coming back to the fact that there was this, this irony of working on large solar infrastructure, but you couldn't drink water out of your kitchen faucet. Um, and so I viewed that you know, as a real, as a social uh, ill but also as a really big market opportunity. Um, and so I started exploring the water industry. I'm trying to understand you know, where are the gaps? Um, where is there room to uh, really take water to the next generation? Um, so eventually moved back to the US, focused initially um, working with a company called Oasis Water out of Boston. Uh, and we were focused there on uh, treatment of really highly brackish waters from coal-fired power plants, um, fracking industry, really with a technology called forward osmosis. Um, and then eventually my, made my way out to Southern California uh, with a subsidiary of Edison International called Edison Water Resources. Uh, and there we were trying to build a, a network of brackish groundwater wells here in Southern California, trying to localize water resources. Um, and then eventually worked my way over to Aquatecture and uh, here I am today. So aquaculture is a, a really unique beast in the water industry. You know, if, if, we, if we existed in, in San Francisco, we'd probably call ourselves a disruptor. Um, but we, what we are really is a, a multi-strategy firm that sees that there are kind of these really strong gaps in the water and wastewater industry. Um, where, uh, you know, traditionally, the water and wastewater industry, for many, many reasons, has been relatively slow moving um, I'll say less innovative at this point than clean energy. Um, and so what our goal here is to fill in some of those gaps. Uh, so that takes several different forms. Um, we have a, a suite of technologies geared toward on-site wastewater reuse, uh, we, we, what we call our water pods. Um, so we have one system that's our larger system geared towards treating about an acre foot per day. Um, and so that's uh, basically if you imagine on, on a on a piece of farmland, it's a foot of water over an acre of property. Uh, and so that's just kind of a, a water metric that's used. Uh, so that's about 325,000 gallons per day for college campuses, data centers, cooling towers, things like that. Um, we also have a smaller system geared towards treating water or wastewater on site at a building level or a development level. So in San Francisco, for example, any new building over 250,000 square feet has to install an on-site gray water system. So our water pods are one of two systems that are pre-approved there in San Francisco. Um, so that's kind of the, the smaller scale infrastructure work that we're doing. Uh, we're also working on a couple larger scale uh, water and wastewater infrastructure projects here in the US uh, where we act as the developer. So we get all the environmental permits. Um, we work with an engineering team on the East Coast. Uh, we do all of the construction management and eventually we'll own and operate those facilities. Our third business is what we call water talent. So thinking again about what are the gaps in the industry? Um, there is a, the baby boomers are currently retiring. So it just so happens that a lot of the baby boomers in the water and wastewater industry came in in 1972 when the Clean Water Act was signed. And so as those folks kind of move towards the, the end of their careers, there really isn't the, the workforce backing them up to kind of take on that mantle. And so what we've done at Water Talent um, is we've brought on board a network of about 600 operators located in 42 states. And they go out and they serve as kind of short-term staffing for municipalities or industry that had an operator that 
is retiring or had an unexpected sickness, and they can't find someone via traditional means of putting an ad in the newspaper to come fill that seat. So we go in for anywhere from you know, a month to two years, keep that seat warm while they find someone or train someone to, to fill that seat. Uh, and then lastly, you know, we're a privately funded uh, company and so we have the opportunity and, and the mandate to go look at new and innovative water and wastewater technologies um, and make investments into those firms. So that can range everything from uh, kind of distributed wastewater treatment to emerging contaminants like PFOAs are kind of the new uh, hit contaminant that are, that are out there right now to uh, data analytics, um, trying to understand what is in the water and wastewater that's leaving your, leaving your house and coming into your sink. Um, because really, when you understand at, kind of at the point of need what that water looks like, um, you can do a lot more on the treatment level to optimize and make things more efficient.